It's a riveting story that's not for the faint-hearted, but a must-see. The adaptation of Stringbird's Miss Julie, now Miss Julie, hit the stage at the Baxter Theatre. With an amazing cast on board, we decided to pay them a visit. It's an explosive new adaptation of a forbidden love tale set against the backdrop of power struggles in a post-apartheid era. Throw in a formidable South African cast and you get the epic love story of Miss Julie. With a cast consisting of Togo Nshinga, Bongile Mansai and Hilda Cronier, the internationally acclaimed South African director Yael Faber is ready to spark controversy once again. And who doesn't love a great love story that causes a bit of a stir? Now, this tale is a classic story called Miss Julie, uh, but you decided to rework it. Why? I believe the world has probably seen enough Miss Julie's in its original form. It's been done again and again, and it's, it's a magnificent story um, about a servant and a young woman who have an affair overnight and what that uncovers. The original was actually about um, the battle between gender and class um, in, in a turn-of-century story, but in, the South, in this uh, production that we've done, um, we've done something very specific with it and the dialogue um, hones in around those issues that are about contemporary South Africa. What are those issues? The issue that comes to the fore in this version is the land issue, but it deals with a lot of the other bits and pieces of um, what the shrapnel of a post-apartheid society is. It, it is quintessentially South African, this version. So what's the plan? It's a free country. I have a plan, Miss. Hoping for a hand out, some land, so that one by one the farmlands return to black hands again. Maybe. In true Faber style, the director, playwright and creator tackles the deeper complexities of our society and sets the play against the backdrop of the remote, bleak beauty of the Eastern Cape Karoo. You know, I believe very strongly that there are two kinds of theatre. I think there's the kind of theatre that uh, anaesthetizes you, which I don't think is a bad thing. We all need a little bit of forgetting how hard life is. And there's the kind of theatre that wakes you up, and I'm interested in the second kind. <laughs> With more than 35 years' experience in the industry, and maybe more commonly known for her role as Donna on the Mnet Soapy Goli, Toko and Shinga returns to the Baxter. What got you interested in this role? I've lived through the changes in South Africa, and the woman I'm playing is one of the women who's been there through those changes, who's experienced so much hurt. These experiences that, that I, I, I'm living through from this woman, I come from times on stage where you would be standing on stage and not knowing if there's a special branch man standing at the door waiting to say, you are not allowed to say that, you can't say that, so you go and sleep in John Foster Square for two nights. I can't say that we can forget. Yeah. It's experiences that we can forgive. Yeah. We can be a place of the story, the couple that ran away from Viennin plants. It's a beautiful story, a whipping farm. Our German guests would love it. Uh, it's the first time you guys are working together. What's, it, what's the relationship like between you two? I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes, no, it's amazing. Bongi's an incredible human being. Do you realise you're going to say something nice now as well? <laughs> no, I don't have to, but I think it's... it's I've, been, I've been saying to people that I've met after the show that without Hilda, I don't know how I was going to you know, be able to do this kind of work. She's just amazing actress. What's it like working with, uh, with the director here? It's been amazing because before I started my first day of rehearsal, I had to strip everything I know. Because as an actor, as an experienced actor as well, you tend to say, what does she want? That's exactly it. What does she want? And then you go through that process and understand. Works from a very organic place. Everybody's allowed to, to work and grow together. It's not like, shut up. You guys are just actors. I will tell you what to do. It's very much like a beautiful, organic process that just forms. So it's not like she walks around in leather boots and a whip and just, you know. I don't think she would survive that. <laughs> <laughs> Still no rain. Just light drops that mock the dust and make this old roof leak. You've written many adaptations of Shakespearean stories, Greek tragedies. How difficult is it to adapt something that's like an already existing classic? I find it very exciting because you can work um, within a frame that most people are aware of um, and work along a spine of narrative that has been established as very strong. I think the real challenge is always 
what to keep and what to shift and what to do away with, because people get very protective over the original. But also knowing that there's an irony in that, that, that if an audience is expecting a Greek tragedy to end in a specific way, if I shift the ending, there's a very strong statement in that. So it, you have to become a very aware of what you're doing inside the frame of the adaptation. This is my home. My great-grandfather built it with his bare hands. No, great-grandfather was a squatter. Take this shack and put it somewhere else. South Africa is such an exceptional society that's had to focus on moving forward in so many ways. Um, that there's, there's not always a lot of time for reflecting on what's sitting underneath. South African audiences need to heal. Um, South African audiences need to and talk about land. things and, and not hide behind the fact that it's post-apartheid, so we don't leave those kind of things anymore. We live in this world, but at times we pretend as if everything, everything is okay. Yeah. But, you know, when, when, you, when, you, when people watch this, now you can tell that there's a lot mm. that is not okay. There's a lot that still needs to be to be done. So this is your revenge. No, this is a restitution of body and soul. My heart, what is you? Will we be shocked? Reality is shocking. Yes. South Africa is a, a, a stunningly alive and also quite shocking society, as is the world. But I, I hope that when when people leave the theatre beyond the shock, I hope we bewitch you rather than shock you. Proudly brought to you by Hennessy Cognac.